One year ago today, the small town of Paradise was leveled by the Camp Fire, California's largest and deadliest wildfire. 85 people were killed on the ridge that day, and thousands of homes were lost. I know Paradise. My grandparents lived there. I grew up visiting there. So I went back to where it all happened. I could die here. This could be the end of it for me. I actually could feel my arm hairs singeing through the rolled up window. I mean, I fought that shit for 20 years. Never thought I'd come home. <laughs> when you drive down the streets of Paradise, the first thing you'll notice are the mailboxes and the empty lots behind them, the footprints of homes that once were. This is what remains of the more than 18,000 buildings that were destroyed during the campfire. Many of the lots in Paradise have been cleared, but some, like this one behind me, have remained untouched, frozen in time, their owners nowhere to be found. Before the devastation of the campfire, Paradise was a small bedroom community nestled in the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas. The people here were mostly retired, and those who did work commuted to nearby bigger cities it was during their morning commute on November 8th when the news broke. So we're following breaking news out of Butte County right now where a wildfire has burned at least 5,000 acres. The sky looked different, the air felt different, different, and it was coming. These are my grandparents, Wayne, a retired firefighter, and Nancy. They lived in this house in Paradise for more than 30 years. I felt like whatever I could physically carry is what I should be grabbing because we wouldn't be coming back. And that's when we looked out the front window and the flames were rolling over the top of the trees I showed you today. And I said, that's it, we gotta go. It was, I still get chills. They were able to save a few key mementos, but many families had no time, like Jason, a local software engineer. When I looked out the window, the fire was headed up this direction. So we, I literally opened drawers, grabbed clothes and walked out to the truck. We, we didn't spend much time taking much. Um, there wasn't enough time. There wasn't any time at all. Jason and my grandparents were able to get off the ridge quickly, but many were not so lucky. Justin Kilgore, my childhood friend, was trapped on the ridge for more than five hours. As soon as I opened the door, it was just like, it was like getting hit by a wall. You look over the tree line and you just see the red glow. At a couple points, when I was leaving, there was flames on both sides of the road. As much as I didn't panic, there were still moments where, what if I don't get out of this? Some decided not to evacuate at all and stayed to help save what little they could. I saw fire in the canyon, both sides of the canyon, even over on the old Skyway where I came through, and I just got down here as quick as I could. This is Chris Main, my grandpa's buddy from the fire department, who owns this fish and tackle shop. I knew I had a given amount of time, a couple hours before the fire actually got to me. While protecting his business, the retired fireman noticed a nearby policeman. And asked how things were going for him. He said, yeah, it's going okay. I said, I got a pregnant woman across the street that's in labor and she's a high risk pregnancy. Chris jumped into action and drove the woman to the nearest hospital. Got down there I said, what do I do now? My car's here. So I walked back up here. But Chris is modest. He walked nearly five miles through hellfire to get back to his shop. For some, it would be weeks before they would come back to see the devastation of paradise. But for others, it was just a few days. At that point, I was up here was sort of, it would make me sick to be up here. I got to a, the point with my wife that she couldn't look at it. She would have to play a game or be on her phone or doing something, so she wasn't able to see anything. It was just so hard for her. For my family, returning was full of mixed emotions. It's strangely exciting almost in a way because you think you feel everything's gone everything is gone and then you find a few things as we dug through the charred remains of the house we took comfort in the smallest things that survived oh 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 oh, oh. Mm, that blew right there little reminders of the years spent there but now many of the things we held on to have lost their importance the reality of life after the fire has sunk in but a lot of that stuff. Yeah, it's not usable. I think you just grab it because it isn't broken or it isn't, you know, you want to have something. Long after the fire was extinguished, it continues to make its mark on the people of paradise. 
everything was interrupted. Made me realize what I have and what I want, what I want to do, and kind of just put my whole life in perspective for me that day. For some, like Chris and his shop, the fire sped up an already tough reality for small towns. Uh, the fires absolutely aggravated the situation because it was hard to begin with, and now you got some of those that aren't going to come back. But for Jason and many of the stubbornly independent Paradise natives, this is a chance to start from scratch, a chance to build a better community. I see this as, a, as an opportunity, and this is not one that we would have chosen, but it's the one that we have before us. The town is going to build up around us, and it's, it's going to be great. My grandparents have not seen the last year through the same rose-colored glasses. This year has been humbling. And uh, the idea of receiving help is tough. Really With somebody tough. that's so used to just giving help. Yeah. The lady with the socks. I mean, she, I don't know how she knew I didn't have any socks. I had all my tennis shoes. She says, you don't have any socks. I said, no, I don't. She said, I'm going to get you some socks. And she ran and she came back and she had a thing of 12 pair of brand new socks. I said, I need a pair. There's somebody else that needs socks. Find more 12 people. So I took a pair. For a man who fought fires for 20 years, standing on the other side as the victim has special meaning. We were always in the side of the business that we put out the fire and so forth. But when we did, and we got ready to leave, there'd always be somebody standing in the nightgown and their house was gone. You don't perceive that as when you go home, your house is gone and you're standing there in your nightgown. But they've kept their fighting spirit and are cautiously optimistic about what the future holds. But the fire is history. And so you can't back that up. You can't go back and change it. So to dwell on it is a waste of energy. You gotta be looking the other direction and see where we're going. And right now, we're just kind of going as that door opens in the morning as she goes to work. That's what we're doing. And next morning when the door opens, we'll do it again. Wow, Kylie, that was so, so powerful. But being there last weekend, what's the future look like for Paradise? Well, the future of Paradise is still really uncertain. You know, the town doesn't have water. The people there have to go to the, a local church to pick up a case of water every day just so they have something to drink. Cell service is still really spotty. Electricity is unreliable. So the infrastructure in town is really lacking. But there's still some hope. You know, people like Jason are, you know, really dedicated to the idea of rebuilding Paradise. People like Justin want to see it bring its character back. Um, but there are also people like Chris who are moving on. Well, your grandparents have such an incredible story. I, I can't even imagine what they've been through. Thank you. It's, it's been a tough year for sure. I think my grandparents, as you just saw, are in a place that a lot of paradise is at. You know, this place of limbo, not really knowing what the future holds. And it's crazy to think that we're at the 12-month mark from this fire and there's still so much devastation in paradise.